Welcome to a special edition of Opolis Public Radio. Um, we usually dive into things, all things employment commons. We talk about all things future of work. And I'm happy to welcome back one of our favorite people in the ecosystem, Kevin Owaki from Gitcoin. We're doing a follow-up today on a previous conversation, actually, in how the partnership with Gitcoin as the market layer and Opolis as in the employment commons as the compliance layer are taking our relationship to the next step. So, hey, Kevin, good to see you. Hey, John, thanks so much for having me on Show Colorado. Yeah, Show Colorado, that's all we do. I mean, <laughs> honestly, I should probably have a beer with some sort of Colorado logo on it right now, but I don't. I didn't actually make it out of my chair today because I've been on back to back. There you go. Actually, we could do this. There you, you go. Show Cheers. Colorado. Youth, yeah. youth Denver 2020 and Youth Denver 2019 water bottles. Cheers. And 2021 coming, but we don't have new water bottles for that because it's all virtual. Yeah. Sorry, the VR space will have water bottles in it, maybe. Yeah, well, and apparently, swag. Yeah. We're going to have swag that we can buy for our avatars. It's cool. You'll have everything, all sorts of stuff. You'll even be able to walk around with a buff corn ale in your hand. Like, literally. Dream come I'm not, true. I'm not joking. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, We've already introduced you before, so I'm gonna. I've I've got it in my cue cards here to like you know reintroduce you. Bachelor's of Science in Computer Science, yeah. super meme nerd, ten years of engineering leadership, and like YOLO. But yeah. we're kind of I, away from the YOLO, right? Uh, I think uh, let's go with the Game of Thrones style intro. Ironborn, first of his name, Schiller of Colorado, <laughs> Gitter of Coins. Uh, yes, I'm the founder of Gitcoin. Thank, that's all the introduction that we need, I think, to move on. Everybody knows who you are. And you're showing the, the Shapeshift mug there, I see. Yeah, lots of Colorado companies on my desk right here. Yeah, yeah that's how we roll. I love that. So today's, today's podcast is really just a follow-up on our previous conversation. So talking about the future of work, um, you know, thinking about money Legos, project interoperability, collaboration as a means to the next frontier of capitalism, et cetera, et cetera. So the big the big news is really announcing the Opolis Employment Commons and Gitcoin partnership, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's why we're here. Yep, for sure. Yeah, like I said, uh, I mean, I think that what you're doing is super complementary to, to what we're doing. We're kind of building a marketplace for software developers to earn, learn, and connect with each other. And um, one of the things that, we, what, that we've learned about building a the internet of jobs, I think, is that um, people are going to need compliance to to the legacy world and to, to the regular world. And one of the things I love about you, John, is that you'll do the hard work of figuring out all the compliance stuff. And I can just kind of send the developers over, over to you <laughs> and know that they'll come back with insurance and retirement accounts and will be compliant with the lo laws in their local jurisdiction. Wh so, which also which protects nice. you, right? Because the last thing that Gitcoin would ever want to do is 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 somehow de facto become an employer like that would be like of all these these random digital nomads that would be terrible for you right yeah so i mean i think that uh you know the it's it's sort of complementary and it's and it's in, interesting to sort of reason about how we reinvent jobs from first principles in the 21st century and make blockchain the payment rails for jobs and hopefully create a better world for the words a better world for the world's workers by by doing that yeah, no, I, I totally agree. I mean, using, you know, the notion of self-sovereign employment just totally fits so well with the ecosystem that you guys have built, where it's, you know, you've got people just kind of, I mean, really, I always, I actually tell people this all the time in the normie space, like when they ask me about, well, you know, is there a good example of the future of work as it relates to the actual market? Mm -hmm. And like, you got to go look at Gitcoin. I mean, Gitcoin is that flexible, fluid, high frequency labor, global on demand, potentially like at scale, it becomes really compelling. You know, when For you sure. talk about just giving people that, well, I see Gitcoin as a ma massive de-risking platform for an individual's employment, right? So I don't have mm -hmm. to put all my eggs in one basket. Yeah. I can sort of do a bunch of different things and connect at Gitcoin. And then that flows down to knowing yeah. that my life is normal and safe through the employment commons, right? Through, through Opolis. So the, the sure. pairing there makes a ton of sense. Yeah. We're kind of getting into like theory of the firm kind of stuff where basically, you know, what is the overhead from, for you to jump from job to job and, 
and 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 what is the friction between between doing those things and my vision has always been that we're going to have a mesh network of jobs in the future that's kind of enmeshed in our communities and we can right. work with each other peer to peer uh without having you know it's important to sort of have that that ability to work with other people. And I think it provides leverage to workers who are up, who are ascendant in the economy to basically be able to, to choose who they work with. And, and um, you know, I think that there is an uncanny, like I want to build more for utopia than dystopia. And I think that there is sort of a risk there that, that um, you know, we, we need to get enough liquidity and high enough wages into this mesh network of jobs such that people can support a family and like a mortgage and stuff like that. Like things that were part of the American dream in the 21st. Okay, so it can replace the century. full-time job, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I think that where, where a lot of people get lost is, is sort of, you know, like, what if it goes South? Like, what if, what if, what if, um, people aren't making enough? And I think it's our job as the marketplace layer to design for high enough wages and enough reliability in the reputation layer that people can trust each other and build a better future in a positive some way. So that's kind of what we're focused on. Yeah, no, I think that's, I think that's exactly right. I mean, anytime that I get in front of people and talk about the future of work, you know, they, they, they're so ingrained in, in like what we've been conditioned to believe is work, like the job, the the paycheck means to an end kind of deal that replacing yeah. that with, you know, 35 jobs in a year. And, you know, it seems risky, but it's actually not. It's less risky as long as the market layer is there, the accessibility peer to peer is there. You don't have paywalls and other garbage in the way. And mm. then if you have a, a means to, to manage and, and facilitate even 135 gigs. Like if you had a way right. to do that, that it doesn't matter how many there are, that it's all you know automated and seamless and, and easy and using faster and better payment rails and optionality of currencies, but portability yeah. of my own employment. I mean, my God, they, they don't even know what to think. They're just like, yeah. what? Like they think future of work is like new collaboration tools for like the new, what's the new version of Slack? Yeah. And it's Although like, I do love, I do love collaboration tools. Um, <laughs> but, but I do think that there's an opportunity, like we're building a new foundation for value transfer with a blockchain based internet. And in one of the things that I keep, I keep trying to shout from the rooftops is that you want to, you want blockchain to go mainstream. Well, then you got to go to people where their financial lives are. And for 90% of the world, their financial life is their job, not their investments in portfolio. Right. No, and so I think that this it's cash flow, it's, it's weekly cash flow on jobs. Yeah. Yeah. So the internet of jobs is what's after DeFi. I'm saying it loud. I'm saying it proud. And hopefully it ages well over the next five years. We'll see. Well, I'm with you. As you know, I'm, I 100% believe that. In fact, I think that DeFi is as interesting as it is, it isn't really a good onboarding ramp for average people. I think it's really interesting. I think it has the ability to upend a lot of existing financial systems or even create a whole new sector. Um, but I think the internet of jobs is really where you start getting average people touching blockchains and crypto. I think that's where you actually get people. Yeah. And, and I think that one of the things that Gitcoin kind of fell uh, arse backwards into is uh, a user base that is going to understand how to install MetaMask, how to broadcast a transaction. Um, and so, you know, we're sort of starting with software engineers inventing these rails. And the vision is to eventually expand out into other digital creatives, project managers, marketers, uh, sure. writers, stuff like that. And then eventually, you know, the late adopters can come in, the people who are less technically savvy once the rails are built out. But starting with software engineers means that we just have a level of technical competence and we can we can build actual liquidity into these systems before I think, uh, you know, non-sophisticated, or sorry, I shouldn't say non-sophisticated, I should say non-technical people. Yeah, or just people that aren't familiar with the, the you know, the under the hood stuff, you know, getting getting people the next the it's the next sort of circle of people bringing them in mm -hmm. yeah so okay so let's talk about uh, the reward the uh, the work rewards program so i don't know if you knew this but we've actually named the token work i love that that's that, that's a beachfront real estate you got there in the toker symbol the the ticket the token excuse me the token the, symbol right there yeah so the work token is a rewards token as you know that um, the way that we've organized ourselves is really a patronage reward for being a member of the, the cooperative, the coalition, right, around mm. 
creating self-sovereign employment, right? So the whole purpose of the Opolis Employment Commons is, is to create self-sovereign employment for the independent worker. Mm-hmm. And uh, the rewards come to people for contributing value to the ecosystem, as you know. Mm-hmm. So um, you know that we're on the door. We've created a few memes together before, right? So we, um, you famously tweeted or infamous, infamously, I don't know how famous the tweet actually is, but you created the Biddle meme, right? Um, and then we just made it famous at East Denver in 2018. Mm-hmm. And then um, I don't know how many people actually know that. Like, I think there was actually somebody that tried to like say that they tweeted it before you, but like, I don't remember if there was actually anybody that did. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't put a, a ton of stake into being an early adopter of Biddle. I think that, you know, if on my tombstone one day, the highest achievement is creator of a meme, then, you know, I've yeah. probably failed it the rest of the Bitcoin <laughs> vision. But no, all um, I'm saying is you're good at it, man. Like you're, you're good yeah. at the memes. You're, 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 a, you're a meme the, king in the, some way. The key is to take my software engineer brain down from 110 IQ to 70 IQ when you're making a meme, I think. Uh, but Show Colorado, <laughs> I think, is the one that we're we're most proud of on Opolis Public Radio and get. I can't speak for y'all, yeah, but sure. I just well, we love we, we love Show Colorado. That's that's a good one. So the the <laughs> new one though is payroll mining, right? So right. it's it's maybe less a meme and more literal, but like I think the concept of it's very memeable. Um, mm-hmm. So payroll mining. Payroll mining, for those that don't know, is um, as the total payroll volume of the employment commons grows, right? So this means the addition of members for their self-sovereign employment where they receive uh, payroll benefits and shared services that bridge their worlds, right, between Web 2 and Web 3. Um, There are blocks mined, right? So once we hit those thresholds, a block is mined of, of work rewards, and then they're distributed to people participating in the ecosystem. Um, one is for actual being an employee member. So anybody who has their employment with the commons is being rewarded for that consumption, right? Phase one, phase two is um, referrals. And this is the big one. And this is where um, the coalition comes in. So anybody who's a non-employee member, Gitcoin being included, would be a co- would be termed a coalition member. And that's where Um, projects, individuals, people globally can participate in, in helping promote this, this effort of self-sovereign employment, but they don't actually have to be members themselves, right? They, they can refer people. So tell us, you know, tell us how this sort of fits into the Gitcoin and and why this is something that you guys were interested in doing. Right. Well, um, we're not interested in running any pay payroll. And I think the fact that y'all have it sort of like out of the box is, is really a, a great thing. And, you know, one of the things I think that you and I have talked about a little bit when we're, when we're just jamming is, is how the, how extractive the existing intermediaries that are out there that run payroll are. And, and the, the reason that, that those payroll providers can be so extractive is because they've, they've got the network effect. They've got a lot of the world's workers out there. And so there's sort of a, not a duopoly. I forget what the name is in economics when there's only four or five different players. But what I think is cool is that you're, you're sort of building something that's the opposite of that. That's going to be more community oriented and you're bootstrapping the network effects of it with, uh, with, with payroll mining. And so I think it's, it's really cool to play a small part into shilling that to the world. And, and I really hope that the flywheel gets spinning and we can build, a less extractive, a less extractive payroll systems for the world. And that will just, you know, that would enable both of our visions of more fluidity of jobs and building the internet of jobs. So um, it's cool to be able to announce to do the, do this partnership together. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's really cool. And I, I think you're totally right. I mean, you know, in terms of um, the life cycle, if you will, or the, the, you know, um, the supply chain of work, um, mm-hmm payroll the payroll providers is really where everything happens right because it's sticky everything else Mm. is kind of optional up to that point but then you get to the payroll compliance withholdings tax payments all this stuff that has to go on employer record stuff like that's the stuff that they and they know that they can be over extractive because Mm -hmm. it's not so easy just to go down the street and and uh, actually our our, um, membership steward josh lapidus I think mm-hmm. he's, he's here. Um, hey, Josh. Um, he, 
he Howdy. said it's a, he said it's a cartel <laughs> and it's, it kind of is i mean these payroll companies have been around forever and it's unbelievably inefficient how they operate but they have no motivation to do anything different because they're they're crushing it they're making so much money yeah and it's it, it's kind of sad so i do agree that creating a in a member owned mm-hmm. um and community owned mechanism for global payroll i mean it, we affectionately refer to it as a quasi public utility right i mean that's how i see it you know i mean if it right. ends up being profitable the community benefits but it's just a necessary sort of thing that we all have to do that nobody really wants to deal with to your point right yeah i mean i think that you know w- my sort of grand vision for what we're doing in the space is we're reinventing anything that relies on value transfer. The internet of information changed everything that relies on information in society because now computers can send information across the network. So newspapers, entertainment, politics, media, all changed because of the internet. And now we're doing the same thing with computer networks that can transfer value. And so anything that relies on value transfer in society could be rewritten from first principles in the blockchain based internet. And all these dinosaurs, you know, just, just like all these newspapers that, that, um, that, that sort of had a moat because no one else could, could publish blogs before the internet, um, kind of got decimated by the internet. I think there's an analogous thing that's going to happen with all of these dinosaurs that have been building the rails for work, uh, in the industrial age are, are now moving over into the information age. And it's just such a market that's ripe for disruption. And, uh, you know, I think it's, it's kind of fun to think about from first principles, what's going to change because of the internet of value, obviously investments and, and, and things like that are going to change, but insurance jobs, uh, payroll, stuff like that are all going to be, all they all rely change. on value transfer. And so, you know, stepping into that design space of what is this internet of jobs going to look like is, is a really exciting thing to me. Well, I think it's personally the most exciting thing. I mean, when you look at how many hours we spend in work and how many people are dissatisfied in what they do, yeah, like 70% of the U S labor force are stuck in jobs that, that they don't like, Yeah, you know, reinventing the rails and how we transfer value and how we even add value, contribute value, consume work, you know, access work. Like, I mean, shoot, I've been in the HR tech space for almost 20 years. We've been talking about on-demand labor for 20 years. There's no such yeah. thing as on-demand right now. Everything yeah. is like paywalled and, you know, it's just, it's messy to try to connect with people because everyone wants to kind of get their their cut on everything. And mm-hmm. there's so many misaligned incentives with these old industrial age companies that just like... Yeah. You know, innovators dilemma is just the, the tip of the iceberg. When you think about like the problems that these people have, it's really the sleeping giant issues is like, you know, once these things get rede- redefined, it's going to be an avalanche of change. And quite frankly, productivity, in my opinion, mm-hmm. when people are able to align their, their attention with work that's yeah. interesting to them on demand right. in the ether space and get paid mm-hmm. and have all of that happening like that, mm-hmm. dude, it's, it's going to be a completely different yeah. world. Yeah, I'm really, you know, what I've started to set my sights on is decentralized reputation. And so basically, how do we how do we route the right work to the right people is is sort of a question that I'm starting to worry about. And, it's, you know, it's a different, different part of the stack than what Opolis is working on. But we've got 70,000 software developers on Gitcoin right now. And the... And, you know, routing the right task to the right worker is important because, uh, you know, I, I like to say this thing about LinkedIn recruiters, like the, 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 the meme format is, is no one, absolutely no one says anything. And then a LinkedIn recruiter slides into your inbox and they say, hey, you'd be a perfect fit for a mid-level PHP engineer position in Minneapolis, Minnesota. And I just think it's like, <laughs> every engineer has has a story about recruiter spam and how the wrong tasks are getting are getting routed to them and so if we can solve the decentralized reputation problem and and route the right tasks to the right people that's a problem that i'm increasingly passionate about not only because because it's an interesting intellectual exercise. How do we store these people's reputation in a decentralized way where they self-sovereign own it? But also because we have 70K developers in the Gitcoin, in the Gitcoin network and, and it's, a, it's a very tangible problem for us right now. So hopefully I'll be sending more workers with more tasks that resemble things they wanna do into the Opolis layer uh, over the next few years.
Yeah, no, I agree. I think that's a really important point that you bring up about, you know, just the, the metadata and qualifications, reputation around talent. Um, the one, the one thing that I'll point out, it's, it's interesting because there have been some academic efforts to, to standardize, um, skill sets and, yeah. and the quantification of skill sets, but the, the open industry has never been incentivized to adopt it because one of their, yeah. one of their sort of not well, not overly talked about benefits is actually information asymmetry. Like these intermediaries thrive on inefficiency. So if you actually implemented a standard information layer, they would no longer have their competitive advantage to kind of extract as much value as they do. So mm -hmm. it, it, it's kind of an interest with the existing players, there's not a lot of incentive. Like the LinkedIn thing is classic. That's so cliche, it's terrible. But mm -hmm. like, I do agree that, that there is, there's a need to figure out how to objectify skills evaluation in a, in a trustless way. Right. Like how do we actually mm -hmm. evaluate somebody's skills so that me looking at somebody's if, if, if myself or even an automation tool mm -hmm. was going to look at matching the right, you know, task with the right talent, like right. there's got to be a way to do that. I mean, that I find that whole topic incredibly fascinating. Um, right. And I'm not sure exactly how to unpack it, but maybe that's that's our next episode, maybe. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'll say that I'm spending a lot of time thinking about it. And I also think that this kind of dovetails into if everyone's a knowledge worker, then this sort of dovetails into education. So basically, you know, how do you identify a pocket of work that is in demand and people that maybe aren't aren't completely a match for that work, but like with a little bit of retraining, they could they could be a fit for that. So like the ed education is the delta in the n dimensional space between what is someone's skills and what could be someone's skills. I guess that's a very mathy way of saying it, but um, you know, I think that education is, is and job training is, is sort of a part of the stack that's going to be a part of it as, as well. So I, I will solve these problems, John, and I will route the, the pay the workers to you for payroll if you just take care of all the compliance for me that's that's all well, i want out of well we're um, gonna get that all there. we're gonna get that all going and i'm happy <laughs> i'm happy to contribute to solving some of these problems too but yeah we'll take care of all the compliance stuff don't worry about that for sure um okay cool so let's uh we've got a few minutes left here and and we're gonna be a little bit shorter than the typical episode but um any any immediate predictions for the next 12 months for 2021 when it comes to future of work, um, money Legos, like what are the, what are the kind of next mover things that you think are going to happen this year? Right. Uh, number will go up, number will go number down. Go up. <laughs> number go up, number go down. I've tried to, I've tried to hit all of my predictions by saying the number will go up or go down. And that way I was always right because on Twitter, <laughs> what you can do is you can make a prediction and then if it doesn't come through, you just delete the tweet. But this, this Opolis public radio will be preserved forever. No, I, I, I guess like the one, the one like shot I will take is that the internet of jobs is what comes after DeFi, and and I think many will try, only few will succeed, and and I and and my hope is that we're going to build a more utopian workforce than what existed in the indu industrial age, our aging industrial infrastructure, and and so what I'm really, I guess the another prediction that I'll make is that. Our internet of jobs will be intertwined with communities. So basically, you know, my first job out of school was like very corporate and like I had a two week onboarding and I had a paycheck and everything like that. Um, I think Gen Z is get, like, there's gonna be a TikTok of jobs. Like you're just gonna roll into a meetup and someone will hire you for a task. And then maybe that'll turn into uh, a, another engagement from there. And I think that whatever whatever the fabric of jobs is gonna be in the 21st century is gonna be digitally native, but it's gonna be baked into our community infrastructure as well. And so when the pandemic is over and I can finally go back to the Boulder blockchain meetup, which you need to come to, John, I'm really excited to kind of see how do we bake in tokenized incentives into, into our local communities and hopefully do good and make our community stronger by, by weaving this fabric together. Yeah, no, I agree. I think, I think it's um, the fluidity of jobs is the key, but it's at the volume where you could sustain yourself. Right. So like gig work in its current yeah. form, doesn't replace a full-time job. It's it's creating the 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 network effect and sort of like inertia to be able to replace that. And I do agree. I think 
I think it goes one step later, I think, or deeper even, it might even be, you know, digital communities, like, you know, the, the notion of DAOs, like you could be a member of 15 DAOs and mm -hmm. 12 of them might be pretty quiet, but then boom, three of them are busy. And then I'm busy with those. And then two more get busy. And yeah. it's just this constant sort of flow of on demand. Yeah. Seasonality is interesting. Like I know you have that kind of with East Denver where it's like every February there, it seems like there's an army of people at the sports castle <laughs> helping you with that. <laughs> and so, so yeah, I mean, maybe not all of them are just like full-time work. Maybe they're a little bit more seasonal or, or have some sort of quarterly rhythm. Yeah. And just in, in, but then creating the, the ability for people to fluidly find the work as, you know, onboard and offboard, onboard and offboard, like as one yeah. is ending, it's, it's sort of the dream of a consultant, right? It's, it's sort of being my own temporary labor without needing a staffing company. It's right. It's leading the life that I want to live from where, with whom and how much I choose. You know, it really, the, the word that I like is the egalitarian work future, right? It's mm -hmm. creating the infrastructures and systems that people get to sort of more, um, they get to choose and they sort of, they have the tool sets available and they have everything around them. Even mm -hmm. educational opportunities, if I, you know, if I'm sort of 80% close on being able to be a good fit for these roles, yeah, I can plug in, polish up, and then be qualified and get hired, like you know, seamlessly. Yeah. So the uh, the ega the future of egalitarian work is sort of the thing that I I use yeah. as a description quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, I, I like that. I like that framing. Um, I think that like it's it's important to know who you're designing for when you're building this because for for people who don't have a lot of financial commitments or are just starting out on their career, it's very important to be able to try a lot of things, right? And to just like casually work together. But you know, I'm I'm 36 and I have a mortgage and two kids to support. And so for me, not switching jobs a lot is a feature because I need stability in order to support my family. And so I think it's really important to know which use case that you're designing for. And, and I just, for anyone who's out there listening, I, I think it's really like, I, I think it's really important that we also design a segment of jobs where stability in like long-term relationships is a part of the fabric as well. And the, the sort of more casual stuff can act as a feeder, like a try before you buy feeder into, into that, those kind of relationships. So um, my, my vision is that the gig economy is not the future of work. The gig economy is just one part of the internet of jobs that, that we're building. And I think that stability is really important for people who are in the stage of life that, that I'm in. And, and I just want people to know that that's being designed as well in this ecosystem. Oh, did I lose you? Keep going. I think it's just my local headphones. Oh, wait. Josh says he can't hear you either, so it's not just me. John, do you think we can get a gig worker to fix your, your headphones? <laughs> it's a little, can, little future work joke right there. Yeah, I can hear, hear you now. now. Okay. Yeah. I just switched microphones. So I always have backups, man. See? You know, I got backups just in case I got problems. So, uh, yeah, I was just going to say that, uh, or I was saying that I do agree that the gig economy is just part of the part of the overall fabric, but that is what makes it egalitarian. People have the choice. See, the thing that we've done through the industrial age is we've we've sort of conditioned people to think that the only way to work is to do a full time job, forty hours a week, and and some people are going to want that. That's fine. Like, let yeah. them do it. Um, let them just have that that sort of you know, the monogamy of work, right? Let, let them do that. Um, but there's going to be a whole bunch of stuff in between that in this sort of really sort of version one of gig economy, right? And there's going to be all sorts of different varieties in between with the safety and security rails, right? So that's the major thing that's missing today from anything gig economy or solopreneur is that, mm -hmm. that, that sort of stability rails. Mm -hmm solve the compliance and stability rails plus giving people more higher frequency access to work opportunities in a in a in a live environment on demand and you completely mm -hmm. change the fabric of everything mm -hmm. so all right um eat denver what's gitcoin's involvement this year what are you guys up to what are you guys going to be showcasing talking about who from your team's coming that everybody can look out for and uh you want to tell them anything about the um the video sure. game environment? 
Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm really excited to participate in my first virtual ETH Denver. I've been at ETH Denver ever since John put it together and in celebration of community and rainbows and unicorns. And, um, <laughs> you know, I think you're really doing a great job of legitimizing the blockchain space in Colorado. So I thank you for that. I will be giving a talk about what I call the quadratic lands. It's basically a world in which you can make a living working off of quadratic subsidies with Gitcoin grants. And, you know, what are the foundational pillars of that? What does it mean for the future of employment are, are sort of some of the themes of my talk. So I will be there in, in both presentation mode and also hanging out in VR. So looking forward to donning my virtual Buffacorn outfit and, and uh, <laughs> dancing around the virtual sports castle. But yeah, uh, I'm really, I'm really keen to see what the first virtual East Denver is like, John. It's, it's, it's going to be cool. Yeah, Justin and I just got out of the space right before this, and I mean, it's going to be insane. Like the mm. game, the, the gamification components, like all the different elements of you know, just an, you know, immersion and experience and serendipity and randomness and. I mean, we've literally recreated like what it kind of feels like to be at East Denver in some ways. I mean, it's certainly not a replacement for being in person. But, you know, when you talk about the things that we've seen in 2020 or just the experiments that have happened, I mean, it's going to be insanely cool. Yeah. So that's yeah. February 5th through 12th, in case those listening um, don't know. And you can apply to ethdenver.com yeah. slash apply. And yeah. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be a freaking good time. Hey, we just uh, we just got RAC confirmed to do a, a, a set at the closing. Cool. Yeah, he's uh, he's great and obviously a huge influence in the blockchain space. But I still think your magnum opus is uh, getting two governors on stage with Vitalik. I don't know how you're gonna how you're gonna one up that this year. One up that? Yeah. No. Yeah. That, having having Governor Gordon and Governor Polis with Vitalik reading "Be Us for Buffacorn: A Rimsical Journey Through Crypto Land" with literally a buffer corn on main stage live stream. Like that's like mic drop time. <laughs> like, I don't know. That was, that was pretty fun. So we'll see if we outdo it. I don't know. We're, we're just trying to have a fun event and uh, make sure that everybody has a good time. So <laughs> well, uh, Kevin, thank you as always for everything. Um, Thank you for everybody else joining this episode of Opolis Public Radio. Remember to subscribe to Opolis' YouTube channel and check out Gitcoin's social media assets. They got one of the best Twitter games in town. Um, if you have uh, any questions about pod, the, the audio version, you can subscribe to your local podcast distribu distribution method and find it there. If you're a freelancer, solo producer, or independent worker of any sort, Come check out the employment solutions at opolis.co. That's O-P-O-L-I-S dot C-O. And we'll see you at the Employment Commons later on. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Bye. Show Colorado. Show Colorado. <laughs>